Hey, Deef, can I ask you why you record the vi the video of these? What what the video is for? What do you think? I have no idea. <laughs> what answer do you want? He <laughs> masturbates to it later. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's for, for legality and security purposes, people. For quality control. Quality control. That's yeah. one thing. When you miss a session, he can send it to you, or he can make fun of some crazy thing you said in a session, or, um, yeah. So you're not, you don't post these for, for other viewing purposes. Just well, it does end up on you. What other viewing purposes are you asking? To stalk members? What? Or for being stalked, I guess. Yeah. Or maybe to highlight like the evolution of a narcissist over months, you know? I right. don't care. Well, we know no narcissist would ever watch that because there's nothing they hate more about themselves than that story. <laughs> that is the other fact. People yeah. are assuming that narcissist no, no. is stalking them, that they no, would have they the don't. patience to search no. through all these YouTube videos yeah, right. They've never and watch the through the, all the meeting to get <laughs> junk yeah. on you to use Isn't you for, for leverage. Yeah. They've never known a real narcissist because no narcissist would ever waste their time doing that. Uh, but I do understand there is paranoia. But uh, I would also I would also like to commend you at how technologically advanced these videos are. They're all being I can see my own words like showing up in the captions as I speak them. That's incredible. <laughs> That's only yes. if you speak clearly. I that helps me a lot, actually. Wow, cool. Yeah. Because you feel safe about that. That's good. Those caption is available. I didn't know that. Wow. Oh, yeah, look safe. down. Here. Look down there. James. All this for quality control. Wow. Or I could just do secrecy, never watch it, and just lie to myself. If I did good or bad, I'll just say I did good. Fuck everybody else. So I'll be no, I like I like Deep. Deep myself. knows what he's doing. He's Deep is qual Deep is covering his bases. You're talking more than we should all do that. <laughs> Jeff. So, so Deep, can we turn it over to you? I'd like to hear you kind of um, direct this and hear what anybody here who's done their homework thinks about the Rich and Granin videos. Even if it was the pretty part where he's flying his kite on the beach randomly, I want to hear everything. But you're directing. We're getting there. Let, let Deep direct. You just directed Deep to direct. Let Deep direct. I'm not directing. Sorry. My bad. I'm just here to welcome. You are correct. And I wanted to get everyone in line. So there's yeah. a wait list person I had to put in. Not Monica. <laughs> but. Uh, oh, I think that was me, wasn't it? I was on the wait list. Hi, guys. Oh, uh, late last minute one. Okay, this is the answer to simplify. There is no sincere communication with the insincere. There is no sincere communication with the insincere. Yes, there I can fix no your car. Sincere car communication with But that's insincere. not this meaning. There is no sincere communication with the insincere. There is If you get this. No sincere communication with the insincere. There is no sincere communication with the insincere. Then you can play it again. I am dying. That is so funny. Thank you for repeating that on a loop. <laughs> we'll repeat it more later. But when this sinks in, you realize their communication is not sincere. It's not designed to accurately describe their state or your state. Then you can free up some mental energy because you're trying to make sense of insecure, insincere communication. You're trying to debate fairly where they don't care, where they're cheating. And then after they cheat, you want to go to teacher, you want to go to umpire, you want to go to your therapist to get them to not cheat. But there is no, or I don't know of a uh, communication police, or the only ones they do is that's tone police to silence people. There is no sincere communication with the insincere. There is no 
sincere communication with the insincere. There is How's that falling? I, I like that, Deef. That, that worked Perfect. out. That's all the material I have. I'd like to mention something. So, I was watching this earlier. Oh. <laughs> I Question. will take Go. that as a no. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. No, so it's 1613 in that, in that clip. I was laughing my butt off. He says, you'll have to listen to it, but he goes, well, you actually kind of have to hear it to understand the context. But he says that if you fall into their trap, essentially, you'll be living as a part of my French, if there are any children here, but you'll be living as a fucking elf, you know, he basically says that they promise you that you'll have this fantastic life, but they'll suck your soul dry. They'll suck your blood dry. They'll do all this, but you'll be living as an elf. Isn't that fucking great? You know, and if you, if you listen to Richard Grannon, you know, that's how he talks, right? Very funny. Oh. And true Let's to life. see. Let's try this. So we're going to start off with memes. <clears throat> because too many words are... Sorry, uh, my bad. ...complicated for me. Because I have brain damage. And I have a stutter. And I'm told that uh, uh, I have all these deficiencies from a life reading I got. So I'm still feeling shame from that. So I'm just going to be broken. Cognitive overload. Anytime your brain is faced with a mysterious message or a cliffhanger, your brain becomes hooked until it finds out. <laughs> what happened? Did the video break? Was it complete? Why is it so loud? So it's too loud. I'm not going to fix it. But let me play it again and see if anyone gets the, the message. Cognitive overload. Anytime your brain is faced with a mysterious message or a cliffhanger, your brain becomes hooked until it finds out. Why'd the video break? Did anyone notice that? What's people's reaction uh -huh, to the video? <laughs> well, there's the cliffhanger. She's overloading in her projection. Cognitive overload. She's doing it in the, the voice is a little high, which is overload. And then the description of the hook didn't finish. Right? Cognitive overload. Anytime your brain is faced with a mysterious message or a cliffhanger, your brain becomes hooked until it finds out. How to finish it. How to... Until it finds out what? Does anyone see the hook? Did she leave the video that way? Yes. No, I did. Yeah. Well, wait. I think she <laughs> I did it. We're trying to create a mystery in our minds so we're hooked so we can't leave and we have to our brains are hooked. We need to solve the mystery now. We can't ever leave. That's why we need Crystal. Thank she you. saw the hook. We're looking for the attack, the aggressive trigger of the narcissist. But first they overload you. They hook you. Then they escalate, usually. They need to get it in. So by hooking you, confusing you, promising something in the future that controls your perception, that gets you wondering, but that also gets you doubting, like what's happening, what's going to come next. So it's sowing paranoia, but it's also sowing anticipation. So the same technique can be used positively or negatively. I'm using it to try to build anticipation, but I could also use it to try to confuse you. Deep. Now play it. Her. Is that Crystal? like is that like similar to intermittent reinforcement, like Pavlov's dogs, intermittent reinforcement, like kind of 
seem no well yes if i leave you hanging you're chasing after the hook and then if i give it to you intermittently where you can't guess when it's coming then it amplifies your dopamine which is what social media does where you're swiping We're being robots. So, this is the context of the video after I hooked you to try to get you aware of your uh, cognitive overload, your curiosity hook. It's not Richard Grannon. This is one. Grannon's coming later. We've all been the victim of a good cliffhanger, whether it's your favorite television show or mystery novel. It's how they hook to make sure you too. Now, someone who said she was too overpowering, you can see that she's, I can see that she's, she's overacting. She's trying a bit hard to sell this. Does anyone notice that or any other initial reads? She's not used to being on camera, and the editors are adding a lot of extra sound effects. Tune in next week to find out what happens. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret, a way you can hook your friends the next time you're out or at dinner, and you don't even need your own television show. So that's a hook. I'm going to teach you how to hook other people, to manipulate other people. People, do you see how your perception is being pulled, not just by the music, but by the opening pitch? Does anyone remember uh, Tom, who used to be a regular for the in-person meetings? He used to do the hook of, there's three things. And then he'd go into the first one, and oftentimes... He'd never get to the third one, because by the time he's got to number two, he did a segue <laughs> to another th three things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why would so I, I would even... counter it by, by rushing him. I go, three things. Okay, what's number two? What's number three? I'd try to keep him on point to neutralize his hook. Because he would tend to, there's three things, number one, maybe he gets to number two, but then he has side story, <laughs> takes up ten minutes, then he says, there's another three things, <laughs> forgetting number three, and losing the point. But it was amazing technique, which I copied, so I started, uh, so you can use the same tactics. And you heal them because he doesn't come back. Good job, Dave. He was able to be self-sufficient. Yeah. In a second, I'm going to ask you a question. But first, I just need to take... That's another hook. I'm going to ask you a question. But wait. <laughs> first, what's this wait? Care of something. There is no sincere communication with the insincere. There is no... Now the music amplifies, but she's writing a letter, taking time. And the body of language, it's in a box. We can't see what the letter is. So if you're following the video, your attention was from the question and now it's on this box, non-verbally. Okay, quickly, tell me, what is the capital of Colorado? Did you get it? What is the capital of Colorado? How many people answered the question? Boulder? Why? <laughs> There's no... There's no prize. 
you're talking to a video. You don't need to answer people's questions in your head. I couldn't help myself. I said it out loud. See? I couldn't, I couldn't you can't help, help yourself. I could but not. But I warned you. I couldn't. There is no sincere communication with the insincere. There is no sincere communication with the insincere. There is no... So I would try to... If, when I'm trying to be sincere, I can also be insincere. <laughs> but when I'm trying to be sincere, I'll ask questions to communicate, to have a dialogue with you. But I can also ask questions insincerely, just to waste your, your mind, just to distract you, just to give you cognitive overload, to confuse you. Yeah, so I she's... think she is actually triggering me, and I hate her. Yeah. So, first of all, <laughs> Wait, first of all, I'm clap. not interested in hooking people. <laughs> Sorry. That disgust mechanism. I hate her. I'll stop listening. That's a good strategy. <laughs> That's boundaries. I mean, what? She's saying, I'm going to teach you how to hook people. I'm not even interested in hooking people. Then she That's puts a, good a note block. in the box. I don't really care what's written on the note in the box. And now she's saying, what's the third? She's the, um, she's just lost what's me. The like, oh, what's the capital? What's the capital boulder? You're wasting my time. I'm like, you're wasting me time. Colorado. I would turn this video off and I would look for something else to watch because she's done. I would have already walked away because first of all, she's not enjoyable to watch. Second of all, I have no idea what the content is. There's three she's things. She's getting to it. There's three <laughs> things. <laughs> Oh, that's Tom's tactic. But set same same dynamic. Okay, but what what if she was like um like a man and he was fine, you know, and we were like, yeah. I mean, does it matter that she's a female? Is it meant to appeal to men only? Who knows? You know, I'm Maybe. just throwing it out there. That is true. That's she a wicked line case. To... I just hate if she her. were handsome and saying something. Yeah, really, really, really good point. Thank you. <laughs> That's the charisma of the narcissist. They'll do impressive management of looking good, so you'll entertain what they're saying because yeah. they look nice. Yeah. Okay, she's almost getting there, I think. I bet you did. Most folks know that the capital of Colorado is Denver. But that's not the real game we're playing it's Denver. Here. Did it maybe take you a second longer to answer than it should have? And is it because you were curious and thinking about what was written on that piece of paper? And are you still... Those are not... Those are add-on techniques. Those are judgments. That's shaming. I didn't notice that the first time. Let's see. How? These things. And is it because you were curious and thinking about what was written on that piece of paper? And are you still wondering? If you... So, she's pulling your attention. Actually, yeah, this is a... A better example than I thought. Ooh. I didn't update the screen. Hey, I Deep, real so, quick, like, such a who, loser. Who, is, who is that attractive lady? Who is she? Uh, I think it was in the beginning of the video. Let me see. The woman, that, the woman that you keep switching out with Richard Brannon. The woman in the black and white, like, you know, ha no sleeve dress. I wonder who that is. This person. Does that make you Very happy? Very good. Are you good? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> because she's provoking your anxiety. <laughs> so you're wanting some certainty because she's pulling the string of it's coming next. It's coming next. It's about to come. That's creating cognitive overload. But then in this point, she added judgment and shame right here, I think, which I didn't notice first time I watched. Did you get it? I bet you did. Most folks know that the capital. Most folks know that's the capital. And then the hammer comes right after it. So there's a fake cookie of saying most people know this. But no, not people. Folks. You're, you're an idiot. She's super smart. Well, that's smart also a sort of a judgment. Yeah. 
Hey, I say folk. Denver. Oh, folks. I say Stop folk triggering other people. <laughs> I like folks. I'm gender folksy. neutral Yikes. addressing of the group. <laughs> I don't like y'all. Okay. Literally, so we first can talk about this said, later. I ground my kids if they say y'all. But yes, go on. Most folks I, would get it fast. Then she has the, the boomerang. That's not the real game we're playing here. That's not the real game we're playing here. That's to provoke shame in you. Does anyone see that? I absolutely see that. In fact, I had to turn this the sound off for about 10 minutes when I was mm -hmm. trying to make dinner with my family. And just seeing her face and not knowing who she was, even, I was like enraged. I was ready to punch somebody. And yes, I didn't even know what she was that's saying. That's the tactic. So, yes, I she's know. She's smiling. Right. Yep. And she's talking nice, but you want to punch her face. Same. That's what happened to me. I got upset from somebody who was bleeding their uh, suicide bullshit. Ostentatious, ostentatious displays, ostentatious displays of vulnerability, ostentatious displays of vulnerability, Ost ostentatious displays Signals. of vulnerability, Ost ostentatious displays, displays of vulnerability, ostentatious. These signals of, oh, I'm so pitiful, therefore you must please me and comfort or do all these things to comfort me because I'm broken and I wanted to punch his face. It's on messages. It's via meet a message. But he looks nice and it doesn't, you can't see the suicide. You can't see the <laughs> cognitive, you can't see this part. Ostentatious displays of vulnerability. Ostentatious on the surface, displays. it's not there. But it's an Can emotional. Someone just <laughs> tell me what ostentatious means? I'm over oh, not sure. Over not soul. big, large, huge, uh, out of out of boundary with regards to size and manner. Yeah, that's no, a good no definition. Back, just saying whatever they want, highlighting like, it. This could well, be it's an ostentatious bag of granola if it was huge. It's an exaggerated emotional plea. Yeah, no excuse for what they're saying. Everything just loud and bold. It's okay. But if someone's good, they'll make it somewhat invisible. It's a plea, but it triggers your um, Invisible inner child. Uh, usually it's invisible. It's uh, ostentatious displays of vulnerability. Ostentatious displays of vulnerability. Ostentatious displays of vulnerability. It's a mind fuck like this. Hey, get, we have to okay. become, get, we can't be panicked. We have to become, we can't be panicked. We have to become, we can't be panicked. He's saying now calm, that, that, that but is he's funny. panicked. He's an, he's anxious, but he's saying calm. That creates cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance essentially means the bad feeling you get when your map of reality doesn't match the reality that you're faced with. You That's another style of uh, cognitive overload. They say one thing, and then their emotions are another thing. Understood. Good question. I feel that in a lot of people, though. Yes. I feel it all the time. But when Julia, I call you're out right, you're right. people, when I feel this, obviously, this dissonance, I get called out because people don't want to see the two layers because that creates cognitive Oops. dissonance in them. Cognitive Oops. dissonance essentially means the bad feeling you get when your map of reality. So when I see the cognitive dissonance early, I try to point it out. I try to call it out. Other people don't see it. I get called out. Because <laughs> the emotional Wait, manipulator, how, how you get they called? have a better smile. What do you they, mean? How do you get called they seem out? nicer. Remember hmm? when, remember the video of the Central Park uh, Coopers? She just got off for that whole, um, you know. I have that. Yeah. Thing. Um, 
So I was I was reviewing it with some high school kids because I'm, I'm working with high school kids right now. Um, and it was very good for them to see that there's a there's dissonance in her moving toward him, right? Telling her, I'm gonna call the police. I'm gonna tell them you, you know, were da 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 to me in the park, moving toward him while saying she was afraid, right? Like she's crying and like over, you know, over dramatizing. Why are you talking about Karen? Time. Oh wait! About Karen and here the, it uh, is. So yeah, and the bars please don't and girls. Please, yeah. please don't come close to me. Please, please call the cops. Oh my gosh! Please call the cops. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. There is Saying that, and she's walking. He's recording me. Oh, you wanted to point cops. out how Can she's walking. Me? She's being aggressive. Right, she's being so, yeah. aggressive. You can only hear her words. So like, yeah, but her words don't match. Yeah, that is not cognitive dissonance, you guys. Cognitive dissonance is, is being living in a state of two alternate realities that are competing with each other without losing your mind. You know, part of your mind saying this is normal, and the other part is saying this is not normal. What she was experiencing was, was a state of shock. That was that was, I mean, a fight or flight type of situation. That was totally different. That poor girl. I fired the next Jesus. day because she she totally inappropriately acted. It was totally cognitive distance. She hey, who said that? that? She got fired. Oh. Um, the oh. lady I don't, that said oh, that I just said oh. she, she made this all up. Oh, yeah. What? No, this she was upset. Different. And <laughs> People are getting triggered. What's Let's switch an example. Because we bad. could play with that, but that's going down a black I am hole. new. I am new. <laughs> I was more talking about the example that he gave. Not you. Don't worry about it. Uh, let's see. Let's start here the then. The first key principle of the mind games that they like to use is isolation and perception control. You'll notice that when the narcissist is targeting the person, they really want to cut them off from any other source of information. So I was keying in on perception con control. If I, if the person or me or anybody else gives you cognitive overload, which is cognitive this. overload. Anytime you're brain cognitive overload. Any okay, that's perception control. That's hooking you. If I promise one, two, three, now I'm pulling your perception. Hey, Deef, you know what's funny? Is that right after he put that in the video, he, for whatever reason, flashes to the beach. For, for whatever reason, and he finishes like that thought, like on a balcony. And then he goes back to the studio, but it's kind of funny. I almost commented on it. And I was like, very nice segue that you, you know, you motion towards the beach for, you know, uh, isolation. It was a little bit. Yeah, it's kind um, of funny. Weird editing. Yes. Yeah. Or affirmation that would run contrary to the narrative that they're feeding the target. A really important yeah, that's a weird key element cut. of applying this principle effectively is to alter the emotional state of the target. So altering the emotional state, cognitive distance, cognitive overload, or the stronger emotions if you can get them very frightened if you can get them very angry, fear if you can get anger, them to respond from a primal place to trigger your primal emotion that Thank makes you. you opens up your intimacy allows you to uh, take in more of what they're saying mentally and emotionally it's much much easier to control and manipulate their perception you give up your frame to the person who's in a stronger emotional state. That's why I lose, lose when I call out people. Because I call out people in a neutral state, or I try to be as neutral and calm as I can. But the person on the other side has a stronger primal state. And most, if people don't see the behavior, they're going to side with the, with the victim with the person playing victim, with the person who's uh, too ostentatious, the person who's doing 
Uh, Cognitive right. dissonance essentially means Oops, bad was, feeling. In the chat. If you read the chat, ostentatious displays of vulnerability. Ostentatious displays of vulnerability. What's in the chat? It says from I don't want to pronounce it wrongly. Haya or J Arreo says, if I said it wrong, sorry. Um, we're sitting here pointing out all these abuse techniques, but if we point it out and they're in power, then what good was it to point it out? Is the person is asking? Part two. It's a good question. We're not there yet. Okay. Offensive strategies are part two or next week or two weeks from now. Right now, you got to get awareness. We're playing defense. But that's also because the prior video, video was giving you hooks, anticipation hooks. So now you guys want to react and get the answers fast. Yes. <laughs> That's how strong perception control is. Uh, Jeff, can you just wave so we know you're alive? That's all. Thank you. <laughs> you're sitting there like stone, like not no one. Is that a real person? Thank you. That's what Allison's job is. Make sure people haven't died on the meeting. It's just the dog <laughs> that you put there. Is it Jeff in bed as well? <clears throat> Place. Jeff is there. Perception control is the hook. You're going to see that everywhere in social media. Every time you want to click or swipe, that's perception control. A narcissist, borderline abuser, uh, they'll use that too, but then they're going to also amplify with fear, judgment, anger, shame. In fact, they'll quite willingly hand their perceptual filters over into your hands. Isolate. So the magic whiteboard comes. Does that create a sense of authority or is that triggering? Are people ready for the, the whiteboard? When Richard gets the whiteboard, magic just comes up. Listen, Richard is magic, okay? <laughs> You see how I'm slowing things down to try to stretch the anticipation to build that hook so you can feel when your brain's getting full. But I'm trying, I'm going to deliver. I'm going to let you see where an abuser will pull you and never deliver or only deliver once out of 10 times. Then that's they never deliver. intermittent reinforcement. She, she's right. Not there's not a ninety percent. There's not a ninety percent failure rate. It's a hundred percent. Yeah. So you're then you're really hungry for end of story, for closure, for something because you're just constantly yes. pulling you, then leaving you. That's rude. That's disrespectful. That's I agree. a stiff arm. That's what happened in my life reading. Someone. I'm paying for a life rating, $150. I get hung up on because I'm asking questions and I'm blamed yeah. for being disrespectful. No, D, they'll blame you for anything. You can look the wrong way and you could be disrespectful. I, before yeah. you talk about his whiteboard, I just want to uh, say that I think I might've read this earlier, but I just wanted to say this is, this was my remark to the homework. I said, it's so funny that we think nothing of little children doing this splitting their parents' allegiances, twisting their parents' words around, then declaring everything is a lie and unfair before stomping off. An adult yes. does it, and we are watching Granin and his whiteboard breakdown, genius, I might add, of what has happened, right? Yes, because of this. This is the secret teaching. If you can get this, everything's easier. There is no sincere communication with the insincere. There is no sincere communication with the insincere. There is no sincere communication with the insincere. There is with a kid, you know it's insincere. You can spot the fakeness. Just because they're physically an adult using bigger words, it can still be fake, insincere. And then if you play sincerity back you lose yeah 
Period. 22 years. For 22 years. Yeah. Okay. Whiteboard. See, that's my job. To circle back. Finish the story. I could just segue somewhere else. And be an asshole. <laughs> Though if attention went somewhere else, we can. But a good, honest host would give you a hook, but connect it <laughs> later. That's just rude to, to to not finish the story. And frighten or enrage the target, the person. So I was frightened. I was called disrespectful. And then I was enraged because I was silenced for the whole meeting. <laughs> but then I'm suddenly frightened because I wasn't expecting uh, to get shut down. ...or the target population. So you isolate them, cut them off from alternative points of view, and then you take them into a heightened emotional state. You panic them, you frighten them, or you enrage them. And one technique is speed. So I'm slowing things down, checking with you as an audience, audience that are you keeping up? Do you get this? Do you get this? If the abuser speeds up communication and jumps to the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, that's more cognitive overload. So when I have a stutter that actually helps you slow down and digest. But someone who's linguistically fast, ADHD, they can just keep going fast and you're just chasing. Easy. Mm -hmm. I watched a movie that is a real allegory <laughs> of this whole process this morning called Behind Her Eyes. Y'all should look at it. Behind Their Eyes. Netflix. Wait, what's it called? Did you see that, my dear? Adria, was that on a Netflix, you said, or Prime, or what? It's in the chat. It was behind her, behind her, her eyes. eyes. Okay. Behind her eyes. Everybody's okay. talking. That's the nature of uh, noise in our groups. We're going to have to sort through the noise with this, li this large of a group and this kind of triggering content. Use the raise your hand function. We could do that too. Or there's the chat. So throw it in the chat. Do that, Brenda, or, or, or I'm an obnoxious blurter and I can't stop myself. But I love you, Crystal. Aww. Work, they make me use the hand now because, well, we all know why. So I'm with you. <laughs> Causing them to go into a more primal frame of mind in which. So he's calling it primal frame. I would add a different angle that you go into instinctive mind, reptile brain, or limbic brain. So if you don't work on your emotional flashbacks, you revert to inner child fawning. So all they have to do is overload your frontal cognitive functions. You revert back to limbic. People pleasing to parent. Listen to super ego. And they control the narrative. They control the frame. You lose. Because there is no sincere communication with the insincere. There is no sincere communication with the... And scaling out. Narcissistic abuse made simple. The narcissist uses words and language skillfully to attack the target's sense of self. The target's sense of self is constructed from language, from words, and from concepts. So they're attacking your sense of self with high emotions. Fear, anger, judgment, pity, uh, ostentatious displays of ostentatious vulnerability. Ostentatious displays of vulnerability. Ostentatious displays of vulnerability. 
What you're doing makes me feel uncomfortable. I might kill myself, and it's your fault. <laughs> How fair I is that? I like the repetition you use. It really helps me. Because I'm trying to repeat to get the truth in. They're repeating mm. to get their lies into your head. Yeah, they repeat it anyway, fault. don't they? That they it's repeat your fault. it over and over and over also. So. Yes, but they're gaslighting their content, their shadow crap onto you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're doing this. The narcissist entrains you. Your brain My and hero. his brain become one brain. Sam Vaknin. Vaknin! Woohoo! The narcissist interferes with your dreams and resonates with your wounds. They're there connecting no greater to your wounds. The narcissist interferes with your dreams. They're connecting and resonates to your trauma. Resonate with my dark no side. Resonate with my the dark side. With That's why and resonates with your wounds. you need to there is no greater intimacy. integrate the your intimacy. shadow because they're connecting to your unprocessed trauma and shadow. That's another hook because their trauma resonates with your trauma. Okay. Their perceptions Back to here. are much easier to skew. In fact, their perceptions are already skewed as soon as they've gone into that mental state. Oh, that was it. <laughs> hey, hey, Deef, I, I, I feel so badly. You can, you can, you know, ban me from your future meetings. I, I love this. I'm so excited about this. But I got to say, I don't think that like putting together Richard Granin with Vaknin, um, number one, I've never seen an interview between, between the two of them. Um, if you have interview. one, I'd... actually, they did really, because I'd, I'd love to see it. Like, I don't, I can't imagine. Well, if I did watch it, I have to imagine it would not go how I'd want it to go. Oh, they you have... know what? No. I'm right. I did see it. They you together. know what? I did see it back in college. Yeah, that was, it, it's old, right? It's got to be at least five, some years old, eight years they old. They did two. They have you recent ones. Yeah, they did two. You're right. You're right. And I think he even had his wife in on one, but I just, I guess maybe my blocked it out because like they're so they're such different human beings and they have besides how different they are they have such a different understanding of the same psychological concept you know what I mean like back it is approaching it from the very personality that we all can't stand unless you are a narcissist and my apologies I didn't mean to offend you um but you know it I think that Richard is always approaching it from not only a neuro-linguistic programming point of view but a I want to not be affected by this insert his Ooh. colorful language right there type of view and there's mm -hmm. such different points of view i just I, it's it's i guess it's assaulting almost it seems weird to hear both of them speaking back and forth but but it's interesting i'll say that go on this is a preview of two weeks pattern interrupt or shock uh cognitive overload listen you've got to get in touch with your emotions you've got to name the emotion to a nuanced level so that you can process the emotion otherwise it's never going to go away and you're going to suppress oh. it it's going to come back you're going to be possessed by the shadow <laughs> side can you hear the scouts coming out back yeah back. i would <laughs> love this kind of coaching but he says but he doesn't hear, do this hear his accent really come out when he says that because you can hear the northern Listen, you've got to get in touch with your emotions. You've got to name the emotion you've got to name a nuanced it. level so that you can process the emotion. Otherwise, it's never going to go away and you're going to suppress it. It's going to come back. And you're going to be possessed by the shadow side. You'll be possessed. He almost sounds Welsh. In no, some of that. no, he's not. He's Liverpool. That's, that's Liverpoolian. So funny because he has trained it the other way. No, the Beatles, when he says back, you always hear when yeah, you hear back. 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 No, that back. So that's to yeah. shift Is the group a... energy. Wow, I'm, a, I'm American, he just sounds high. So I'm glad to hear that there are other interpretations of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then Your now- Your voice is high, Michelle. Your voice no, is I'm from, high. No, I'm from Minnesota. We, we, yeah, we, have, yeah. we make no excuses. We're <laughs> well, you know, be aware, maybe. I am. Thanks. Be aware. Oh, so did anyone, um, Watch the bonus video. I think there's only real quick. How, how recent view. was that interview with with Richard Grant and his delightful young chick? Oh, this one. <laughs> Pierre is 
is a Vietnamese guy, but he does wear some. That's a guy. Yes. Well, yes. forgive me. I am so uncultured. Wow. <laughs> You're kidding. Well, he's bullshitting me. That's not a guy. Okay, very funny. You guys can all have fun with me. Is that really a guy? It's a guy. Yes. Are you shitting me? Look him well, up. In my defense, what? I mean, in my head is a gender the bender. Bathroom. He's a okay. gender bender. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. No. Yes, I have. I don't live in 1790. Yes, I have heard of that. Well, what are we he talking about? a lot of women. Can we get back on track? Yeah. Thank you, Allison. And look, you get Vaknin. Is disoriented. Oh. Thank you, Dee. He's totally confused. <laughs> Volume's a little low. Okay. okay. This is to open Act Two. Once you recognize uh, language, there is no. Once you recognize this, communication with the insincere. There is no sincere communication then with the insincere. Then you can return. There is no sincere communication insincerity. with the insincere. There is. You can start playing offense. You can start confusing the abuser. How do you do that? Who wants to know? Well, it, it, I think if they have Alzheimer's and they're being played the same thing over and over for 15 minutes, that'd be a pretty easy way to confuse them. <laughs> for me personally. Yes, if they have Alzheimer's. Yeah. But if they're a younger abuser. Or a then... younger or early onset young person who has Alzheimer's, like I took care of for my abuser actually for four years, but that's besides the point. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can set this up. <laughs> you dissolve the snapshot. The narcissist. This tactic is called dissolving the snapshot. Mm. The snapshot is their picture of you that you become trapped by. Their cobweb of a mischaracterization of you. And then when you feel your sense of self and their mischaracterization as too far apart, that creates <laughs> cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance essentially means the bad feeling you get when your map of reality doesn't match the reality that you're... That was last week. And once they have the cognitive dissonance, they can dump their toxic shadow onto you and you take it <laughs> because you thought communication was sincere not narcissist realizing abuse made simple the narcissist uses words and language skillfully to attack the target attack. sense of self it was an attack the target's sense of self is constructed from on your sense of self from words and using there is no sincere insincere communication with the insincere there is no Insincere language. Communication with the insincere. There is no. So this is an offensive <laughs> strategy to make the abuser confused. Vaknin calls it dissolving the snapshot. Right, but, but deep, like, what else do they do? Like oh, he sorry. feels totally confused. Things this are happening, and he cannot confuse him. Them. We want to confuse. Mind. Your only the existence abuser. is as an idealized, snapshotted internal object. And suddenly, this internal object is dying. autonomous, defiant, independent, has agency and self-efficacy, defies him, disagrees with him. So defiance, that's a teaser. You have to learn how to defy the narcissist. I'm not here to please you. But that's not okay. my problem to make you feel comfortable. It's not your responsibility to make somebody else comfortable. They have to earn that. They can't just cry, fake pity, and you comfort them. Fuck you that. Just you need some off defiance, the video. man. You need some fucking spine. You should fight. Adria. Adria, stay there. We just did that by taking off the video of Cooper. Yeah, don't leave though, Adria. We're we're all here. Deef wants us all to talk together. He's not just trying to get us to rewatch videos we've already seen. Well, I could have been framed as saying that, but I also was trying to be mindful of trying to get to 
to this point. So I had a sort of catch twenty two thing. I believe of you whether did. to stay there or whether to move forward. No, so I didn't. It was yeah. a judgment uh, call. I wasn't upset by. It. I'm just saying that basically, like people started crying and then we took it off. It where are you reason. from, Adria? Where yes. are you from? I absolutely love people your were, accent. I'm in love with you. People are Wait, crying. What was that sound effect but from deep? It got contagious, and it's hard for me it. to overrun multiple contagions of crying. I've done Deep it in, a DJ in person. Deep, you were a DJ somewhere, weren't you, one time? I've done it in person when Leslie shared her sob story, which is <laughs> actually a genuine that? story about you? her was son died. Tonight? I don't. I think I'm, I'm sure Not I tonight. missed that. But that everyone tonight, started panicking because of her crying, which is reasonable. But yeah, she wanted yeah. the, mean, the meeting to go on, but everybody else won trying to soothe her. Oh, geez, so I got judgment because I let the meeting go forward, which is what Leslie wanted. But the group was freaked out by a white girl crying. Well, by a girl crying, so what dude. But by somebody crying. A girl crying. No. Adrian yeah. crying. No one cares. Who cares? But my we all point... care. None of, none of us are here because we don't care about people. Those you... are our narcs. They're out living life, taking care, advantage of oh, other people. Now we're getting into. Yeah, yeah well, we are. We're all thou here shalt, to care. Thou shalt not. These are like the thou main shalt, one. Who thou shalt not. Like race is kind of a trigger <laughs> for whoever this person is. And so. It is? Not for me, but... for you, probably. Let her finish, please, Michelle. I know you. <laughs> What's happening? I don't know. We're losing signals. People okay. are getting I triggered. Stop talking oh. my food. Please go ahead. Oh. And then, and then Sam Vaknin's face keeps popping up, and you know that's that's frustrating for me because I oh, I love him, but oh no, oh no, I think we oh no, I think it would, oh no, it would be better oh, no. if everyone just stopped talking for right now. I think it would be better so that we don't hurt anyone's feelings, so we don't say anything inappropriately, so we don't speak out of turn. Let's let Deep talk, okay? Everybody, cool. I'm gonna mute everyone else. To that's fine. It is his meeting, uh, right? She's right. It is his meeting. What we've got here is failure to communicate. What we've got here is failure to communicate. Moderator of this debate, and I would like you to let me ask my question. Moderator of this debate, and I would like I pulled you to out let me ask Mike my Wallace. question. Mike Wallace. Is that who he was? Yes. <laughs> Remember that debate? <laughs> so... Back to trying to set up the offensive tactic. Do you guys want to get even? Do you want to confuse the abuser? Do you want to make them leave? Do you want to be free? You have to be offensive. And this is going to be a two-step strategy. And it's used before, like uh, agree and amplify. Agree and amplify. That's part of this tactic. But let's see. Acts in ways which undermine and challenge the internal object. And this is extremely disorienting. The more profound the gap between idealized internal snapshotted object and you, the more you draw away, the more you drift away from the idealized internal object, the more frustrated and aggressive the narcissist becomes. So you have to make more distance from their snapshot of you. The thing is, they freak out as you get more difference, as you ex exert yourself as a different person. They will amplify their emotions. They will start getting anxious, confused, frustrated. That's a temporary pain. If you stay there of being different, they will have to leave. So it's a little bit of, of uh, a dangerous tactic in the short term. But if you just stay steady of being different, 
which is just being yourself, they will fall apart. And this is going to, he's going to express this frustration and this aggression with a torrent of negative, sent, negative sentences. So you should pay attention to the positive sentences and to the negative sentences. You so you need to take notes. You need to record meetings. You need to audio record conversations with your abuser and notice two things. What are the compliments and what are the negative judgments that you need to key in on, make a list. And then what do you do? You should write them down. And then what you do, you engage in defiance. You defy, you fight, you. You need some defiance, man. You need some defiance, man. You need some fucking spine. You should fight. But you can't fight until you have defense. That's why the first part of the meeting was trying to get you aware of how your brain gets hooked, how you get cognitive overwhelm, because you don't have the first secret. There is no sincere communication with the insincere. There is no sincere you have to communication get with the this. insincere. There you is have to no stop misreading communication with the insincere. their insincere manipulations, outright lies, distortions. You got to stop taking that at face value. Yeah, Deep, what is your point? You've repeated that like over and over and over. And that was a 17 minute clip that he put on that was so valuable and so pithy. He had so many great things to say. And this is I, the admire, point. There is no I admire you because I'm sure you speak two this languages. Is the point. I only speak one. There is no this is the point. communication with the insincere. Well, there is I pity you. No it sounds so say. simple. You'll say, I got it. I've got it. But if you're... I if you're thinking you've got it, you probably don't. Yeah, no, I think he would be upset if that's all you got from his 17-minute clip. He will be coming, most likely, in a couple of weeks. I'll record your questions. So I'll ask I him. love it. Because if you'd give me, like, one minute of a platform, I'll tell you that what happens about 17 minutes into his video, and I made a comment about it, is he makes a really oh. funny comment. And it's oh. esoteric. But he basically, oh. he basically says, oh, you oh. Sorry, your flying monkey is is jumping in there to cut you off. So. Ooh, this was good. Tell me about that. So that's a mischaracterization to label somebody. I was just asking to try to silence them with I, a label. I'm literally in the same situation as all of you. I was abused right for now. Eight years. Yeah, you have no idea. And then right really here bad. is a hook right, no, what I'm, what to try I'm to control to is that, your right, attention by saying I was a victim. Just like you, I'm yeah. poor, pitiful me. Now I will give you directions to listen to me more, or to constantly minute. control your perception I... of everyone in the room. Are, are you not trying to do that? Does having your own group that you pay for, or everybody listening now here's to you, a pivot to, you gotta go. to attack hey, me? Hey, hey, yo, you gotta to... go. You gotta go. You nope. gotta leave. Nope. Right. No, no, this is a perfect group. example. Right. No, she's See, trying to pivot. Stuff. So. I'm not trying to pivot. Go for, go for it, D. Go for it. And everything she does is don't said, worry. it's yeah. not me. I'm innocent. Bring it. It's somebody I else. Handle, I can it's handle someone anything. else. I've been I can handle anything. Than any of you can imagine. Now listen Bring it. to her You're being very calm, abusive in this meeting, so it seems like you're Emotion. We well, listen to her. Honestly, if I can say something, Michelle, if I can say something. Because we're being a little disrespectful to the leader. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Listen, if Michelle I, if I can, can say something, Michelle just wants to have deep. Then no uh, one's listening to me. Right. I can the way she wants to. Of meetings, right? if, it, why it, don't you bring it to the after meeting, Michelle? Because yeah, you can, you can, so you can uh, lecture us on what you. Were, I don't want to uh, lecture. <laughs> Listen, I apologize. This is not a good fit for oh. me. I'm not trying to lecture. The problem with this meeting is that I most now, meetings I go to right are here. Matt, maybe you is, know. You know, I think Brenda is correct. Let me just say Most some meetings I go to like are a format for people who actually have something to say and they open it up and members can speak. 
can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Like something from Ross like to it. Dharma initially. So when they get over and over, and over. triggered, they start <laughs> rewriting the story yeah, on right. the fly. I, I, and the I more ask, they like get nervous, they keep over and over. rewriting the story. Well, may how I they're always know, I am a victim. If I do communicate with Richard Grannon, not so much as Sam Vaknin, but I do com communicate with Grannon through two of my meetup groups. I am and going they're to so used you. to you, you hogging the spotlight he says in of the internet. So I would, I would look at that. Look in on that, they'll just right? I have no interest flood in the, your... the market. They'll flood the, the room because that's okay. how you communicate. Do you on the internet has their own culture though if this isn't a good fit then so be it it's nothing so personal on so hold on a second it really so, isn't so the um, everyone is welcome everyone is welcome but it's up to us to determine if it's a good fit or not hi so do, uh, do you want to say something brenda made a comment in a chat can i say this brenda <laughs> that perhaps Michelle is a plant by deef you know given the she gone to, is she gone um, no. she gone? Is she gone? Is she gone? Why'd you make her leave? Because she was a perfect here. example. So is she wasn't a plant. Whatever that was. She wasn't a plant by you to treat I did her. not plant her. How no. would I how would I plan that? She's been here before, Allison. Perfect. She's been here before. This isn't her first time. And I don't she, remember her being first time. like that. I don't remember her being like that, but all I know is that it's her first time. I haven't seen her. I don't remember. Wow. Oh, I know I've seen that clown before. I thought groups. it was here. Is that is that a lot? <laughs> fifteen. Oh. Fifteen. So let's break down why we were triggered by her. That's a good thing to do, right? <laughs> do you? <Sorry>. Okay. <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. No, and that's useful. She... Continue. Yeah. Continue. She do triggered you... button. Why not? She's going to say that you handled that exceptionally well and you did not allow yourself to get Shanghai by the injections of, you know, her commentary. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to perhaps be reflective and see how this is one of those moments where we can use it as a teaching tool, almost like that pink tablet years ago that you chew before going to the dentist or when you go to the dentist to show where you need to brush more. Absolutely. You know, and maybe these are... Yeah, and maybe this is for each of us who got triggered in different ways. Maybe it's an opportunity for us to be thankful, oh, you know, for boy. the opportunity, the unintentional opportunity to see where perhaps greater attention is needed in eradicating, if we can, you know, that hook for ourselves. I'm this surprised is... I didn't call her a fucking kind, which is what I wanted to do. So, but I'm. That's I'm what I said. Her. You want to punch them. But the Lighting. sense they're talking polite, you don't feel you're allowed to <laughs> insult them. Creepy Immediately noticed. Adria and said, oh my God, I love your accent, Adria. Where are you from? And, and then she said, phone, like, then she sent me a private message, like, write me sometime. We can chat. I, oh. And oh, wow, she said what? that Adria, Adria clearly cared about race. She Look at her of eyes. Of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> what the now, honestly, I was curious what had triggered her. I was trying to ask her that question to her. So what it seems that the repetition that is is, is doing is triggering you in somehow. Can you tell this me more video, about that? The yes. video was scripting what freaks her out. I was yeah, telling so you I was really that she trying hoovers. to hear her. Yes, to see if she would come up with an answer. But I guess I, I didn't have the chance to ask her that. I noticed immediately when she joined, and she was late, wasn't she? She was one uh, of the yes. late. Yes, that yes. happens. They thanked us. They so come late. I, they they come say, late. I'm here. I'm sorry I'm here. They Let announced. me announce that I am here. I checked her Everyone, profile out, welcome. and it had the scary clown. And I was like, why, why would you do that? Why would you, you know, to me, that was creepy. Side. That's her dark side. That was creepy. I just knew straight away there was something creepy, creepy and off about her. Um, Look at that face. And she got faster and faster and faster. And, and it was like she was bombarding us with confusion, trying to convince everyone that Deef is wrong. Gaslighting. <laughs> Classic gaslighting in the group. That we're wrong about so what? I didn't even know. we became defensive? Dissociated. Though? It was okay. let's have respect for Deef because this is his meeting. And then I, I did she say I pity you? And then she's yeah, like, she she did. Did. I, I believe I, you. I believe you speak at least two languages. 
and then something about pitying you and then respect. Like this is a pendulum. We just saw a human pendulum. That's the opposite. <laughs> you go positive, negative. So it's hard for your brain to take in both. Yeah. She, and she's crazy. How much did you pay her? Tell us. What did you pay her? I, that was too. Uh, I did not plant her. I am not. I don't have extra money. I know I've seen that clown <laughs> before. I know I've Deep, seen her somewhere. Deep. Deep, the real question is how much would you pay someone to come into your group and do that? <laughs> that is a good question. Yes, if I had a resource. Well, that, was a, that was I a might consider it. time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a plant for like, did you notice the dancing bear? And we can use it as a teaching. So you guys that. think that she's a <laughs> narcissist. <laughs> Some of the opportunities teeth, to heal. Her teeth are exceptionally white, but you can tell they're She blurred. acted like one. She oh, more had like very a high traits. Okay. She had very I'm high traits. I'm just new. I've just got out of a relationship and trying to learn. Yeah. She Where had very wife. high traits. She hogged well, the we conversation. We can speculate. Yeah, she, she was. never yeah. didn't give room for anybody else. And then she was giving the hoovering and the judgments, which is what uh -huh. Sam Vaknin says. Record them, write down every compliment, and write down every judgment. Do the opposite of every compliment mm -hmm. and do more of every judgment and they will leave. That's the formula that she interrupted because she doesn't want to reflect on how she does that. That was I triggering think she her. Freaked out. Sorry. But I'm going to tell you, I know we were talking about her, but uh, Cody, you'll be able to watch this again. So you'll be able to assess for yourself. And I do, you learn, but uh, the, yeah. The phrase that you keep repeating that is basically like it's impossible to have a sincere conversation with the insincere. Oh, she hated that. She targeted yeah, that. But that yes. was so painful for me as well because how many times I sat down and I'm trying to have a sincere conversation and couldn't have it and the person who was trying to have a conversation with me say, are we going to have an honest conversation? And then I said, oh, so I guess we have been dating for three years and I don't Somebody's know Somebody's gaslighting you. Yeah, so, so can you show me how honest conversation looks like? So that phrase really triggered me because it's like, oh my God, I have been doing that, doing that the whole time. So that's why I was curious why she was, oh, I don't want to say overreact, but react really strong on that comment. Because I'm going to tell you. This comment is judgmental. There is no sincere communication. Oh, What's so the judgment? There is no sincere communication with that's them. like the pac-man for me the pac-man song that's kind of it's judgmental go through it's all my spine my nervous system insincere conversation should be judged harshly that's yeah. the message yep. uh, yeah. and claudia it it triggered you because someone always said to you are we going to have an honest conversation and you were having yes. an honest conversation but they weren't so you were gaslighted so oh, this is, just happens dissonance. to be something that triggered you in this case. Why it triggered her, we don't know. Guys, so, <laughs> yeah, so I was trying to ask her that question. It triggered it her because she didn't overreact. She came here to be insincere. She and was insincere. Was, yeah, she you certainly was attacking people. I don't know. You know, she freaked <sighs> out finally I'm, when I'm I said. I'm still kind of new to this, but I, I'm still curious, you know. But are you she, triggered said that she came here by before. Michelle's anger? <laughs> yeah, because I was never triggered Absolutely. by her anger. Yes. When I said to her, you can lecture later, then she got, went off. That was it. That was like the final thing. It was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you because you used the word lecture. It's kind of, kind of microaggression in a oh, way. No. Yeah, it's I honest. escalated oh, with her. Honest. I escalated. I, I matched oh. her because she was lecturing. She was lecturing Deef and saying, Deef, how dare you take uh, Richard Grannon's video and, and, and bring it down to uh, three sentences and hand it to us. And Deef has a reason for doing that. And this is his group. And she didn't stick around to find out. This is Deef's, Deef's format. She's Holly. And this Holy, is oh, Holly, I completely agree with you. Definitely agree with you. Because in the beginning, I was so annoyed. I said, when are we going to go to the meat of the situation? Why are we keeping like um, bullying one another? But then you See, that's your instinct. Yes. Your instincts are good, but you were doubting it because Michelle was just rewriting the story. 
constantly trying to get you to track her version. I was trying to figure out if she came from a trauma bound situation. And uh, she's a meetup she organizer. From. Yes. She hosts yes. a support group. <gasps> I have to find Ew. her. What the you? hell? I'm going to find her right now. <laughs> I've warned you. I, I keep. I, what I wanted to say was. <laughs> This is what I, was I was trying to say it. We, like, uh, there were so many her people. Co-organizer. Group. What nice. kind of support group? Healing from mm. narcissistic abuse. No fucking, how could anyone talk? How could anyone fucking talk in that meeting? Mm. First of all, I don't believe it. Second of all, what I, I want to say group. was that I, don't know. I think the, the rest of us, what I was getting a little about is, look, Deep always has a, a, a way that he maestros this whole thing. He's got clips that he shows us that he's shown us a million times, but they all do tie together. So I know that it gets frustrating sometimes, but I want to say that what I was getting pissed about was that I thought she was complaining that she had seen the same thing twice. But, it, and, and I don't know if anyone else did, but like for, from now on, like let's let D, it's hard enough to be him. Let's not get upset yeah. with him when he shows us things because it has a point for some reason and it'll it'll help us. It does. In the <laughs> yes, but it was. I completely agree to you, Brenda. It does. Okay. I need the repetition because without the repetition, yes. it doesn't sink in. I just yeah. need Because I we have been conditioned it. so many times. We condition goes through, uh, happen through re repetition, right? Well, it's We're repetition. Not Batman. And exposure. Yeah, I, I need the repetition. I love the full format. stop. Yep. Me too. Yeah. Really it really helps me. Yeah. Adria. Adria. I'm just asking, Go. Brenda, were you talking about my mentioning the video? Yeah. Oh, you mentioned it because you were like, not nah, this again. This is going to make me cry, but you meant it like, like. No, I didn't say not this again. I was just saying that that's what we did before. I wasn't upset about it. I was upset. With no, I wasn't talking. Yeah, I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about how she reacted to what you said, because you were okay. like, you were going to be you, your point was very Adria, like we've done that. We've been here, like <laughs> you know, but hers was why you keep showing this. By the way, there's this other snippet that you should move forward to. Can I have the floor for a minute, even though I've already had it for 10? And that was the difference. <laughs> She totally tried to hijack the entire meeting. That's what it felt like. Because yeah. she was triggered. Yeah, she got the, triggered by your your definition of cognitive dissonance. Remember that? That she too. Said, no, that's not it. That's not it at all. And then you played the tape where Richard Grannon explains it. Well, and yeah, he explained it. Got yeah, escalated. Because Richard like Grannon was her defense. cover. He's yeah. like, I'm with Richard Grannon. That's my expertise. But then when I have a Richard Grandin quote, she can't counter it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, so the point of, of like going through and talking about the triggers, I feel like we're doing it, right? So we should, should we start like cataloging them? That's your emotional literacy. What triggered you from her and oops. How long took us to her. react to her? Look at that face. <laughs> Look at that soul. It didn't, it didn't That's take long. what I saw immediately when no, she came in. Teeth. They're, they're totally smudged out, which means she whitened them on the... I, I don't care about how Look she looks. Look at the anxiety. It's She's the eyes. hunting for yeah. a reaction. It's the eyes. Very intense. Oh, yeah. I, I texted Kurt. I'm not trying to one-up you all. Like, the first second I freaking knew, I'm like, oh my God. Right? I'm like... She's triggering me. If she left, you should have given that survey. Then. <laughs> oh, she missed the survey. And then I said, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine working with her? Yeah, she's she's really locker her in a closet. I'd be like, you can't talk anymore. Bye. <laughs> oh, hey. What, what, oh, you go to that meeting and don't say a word. And um, here is a big muzzle. But she they... is locked in the closet with that clown. <laughs> so let's I add some to more a narcissistic context. Abuse recovery Wait, I'm sorry. with a clown like that. Wait, <laughs> Adria. Jimmy, I just opened the chat and read it, and she said, um, uh, "Let's see." She said, "This group is not healthy." Wait, she says, "Hey, 
contact me sometime if you'd like to chat. This group is not healthy. And oh, then she she's gives trying to poach. Number. Yeah. And she says, any therapist on earth, if they heard this, will report this to whoever they thought would listen. <laughs> Are you going to the police? For what? Adria, Adria, she needed a token black female in her group. You don't even like <laughs> No, she was she, oh, token my ass. She she made a racial comment to Adria. Hey, yeah, I yeah. oh oh Adria, I like I'm sure hair. you you I know you care about race. I, I my face. I think we all do. I was like, what? And I think it was right after that. I was like, okay, you have to go. Like, you have to go. No, we don't exile. We no, it was then leave. when I said I think everyone should mute their. We make them leave. We don't need to ban them. We just get annoying. <laughs> For the record, I just told, every, I nice didn't point her out, but I said, so we don't hurt anyone else's feelings. And so we can let D for on the meeting. Let's all kaipe the boca, right? That's, I did that because she pissed me off, Adria. I was a scrappy dog on that. It pissed me off. Own that, own that trigger. Own you, that yeah. disgust. I've never heard you say mindful. And then own that like, fight. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Why did that trigger me? Now this is useful here. This might make sense now to try to bring some clarity. Mm -hmm. This part, uh, it's only 30 seconds. Only the authentic are interested in their emotions because only the authentic are interested in themselves. Only the authentic are interested in themselves. What's the inauthentic? What's the insincere? You say, well, narcissists are self-centered. And I'll say, no, they're not. They're others-centered. That's the key. Narcissists are others-centered. That was my whole point about they're that. They're others-centered. They're reaction-centered. The they're reaction-centered. They the reactions of others. Mm -hmm. So what we saw with Michelle is she was other centered and trying to control everyone in this group, 20 people. She had so much hubris to want to control everybody in this group's reaction because they're other centered. They, they use I a lot, but they're other centric and their reaction focused. That's her eyes. With this this helps me a lot that this really helps her eyes me a lot. are looking for your reaction she's trying too hard that's a tell there's too much tension and anxiety in the eyes wow. trying to control other people's reaction that's why they're anxious that's why you get anxious when they talk to you because you feel their anxiety that's you what the feel their is judgment about. that's i was just going to say that juliana you see the eyes and the, the smile on the clown but they're dead eyes you know yeah same as the clown. i was just thinking the same thing juliana that's, that's good too they're hey, dead Dave, can, can next week's meeting be about how to identify crazy eyes <laughs> it's easy for me i don't know i don't know how to road to do a roadmap We'll try to include uh, that as a portion. Crazy eyes. <laughs> I'll tell you how, Jeff. If you take, if you put, put your hand up over the nose and just look at the eyes, and if they scare you, they're crazy, right? Take the smile away, and if the eyes scare you, they're crazy. There you That's go. what my yeah. eyes look like after after the narcissist abuse. Okay, they've calmed down. But yeah, okay, okay. Holly. <laughs> <laughs> Or how about incongruent facial features? The eyes don't match the smile. Uh, that's fakeness. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like Inconsistency. Oh, I like that term. It's new. Incongruent facial features. Uh, smile yeah, to me doesn't look like a smile because I have facial problems, understanding people's faces, recognizing. The smile to me looks like a grimace. It looks like a, a pain. Leer. 
Leah. Uh, Leah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. That. Can you? Yeah. Hello. Juliana, you, you could if you would you like to. Do um, incongruent facial that. features if you try. Juliana, just explain yeah. that you're on the spectrum. And so your ability to oh. see things that we neurotypicals can see is heightened. I, I, I don't want to say suffer. That's not the word. I have prosopagnosia, which means I can see the details in the face, but I can't put the face together as a whole. So I can't recognize people's faces. It takes me time. It takes me the same amount of time to recognize a face as it does to draw a face from every detail. So mm -hmm. I recognize smart. people. I recognize people from their ambulation, the way they gesture, the way they move, the tone of their voice. I, I see the silhouette of them as an identification, the hair, um, the earrings they wear, the t-shirt, the, the colors they wear. That's how the I context. identify people. Yeah. It's so, yeah. just, I used to have cataracts in both eyes and I got them, uh, you know, surgery. And just this morning I was remembering that that's how I also used to see people. It's funny, everything that you said, yes. cause I have the ability to see detail. That's yes. cool. It's, it's amazing because I love looking at details. And when I am talking with a narcissist, it's really funny because I can't look them in the eye. I'm studying their mouth. I'm studying the way can see one corner. A narcissist. One corner of their mouth usually is more emotional than the other corner. And it doesn't match. It's, it's, yeah. it's really weird. Incongruent. That's why I said yeah. incongruent. Yeah. You need to sure. draw that. Yeah, what that? You need to draw what that looks like. Yeah, I will. I so will we, because it's it's fascinating how please, what, if you can. I not like I know you're good, but just like give us an idea of what that that looks like in the mouth. Yeah, it, it's amazing when when you can see these details and people say you're not autistic. You can look me in the eye, but you need some defiance. It's, not, it's it's not that. We're paying attention there. to the details, the, the, the nerve in the neck. Take um, notes, pay attention. Mm -hmm. Notice the inconsistency, mm -hmm. the difference. And you can see, you can see something you up here and something in the corner of the mouth. It's interesting. Oh. So how do we wrap this up? <laughs> Who understood or who still has lingering issue with the case study of Michelle, which I did not plant. Yeah. First time you know, I saw her. That was beautiful. That was so perfect. That's why I'm, I have uh, part two in two weeks. Because mm -hmm. I thought I need oh more time. Gosh, you're teasing us. <laughs> making us wait for the part three. I picked up on that. May I ask a question? I only said two. I don't know if there's a part three. Claudia. <laughs> so I'm just curious from your, for your perspective, from Michelle and his here on reactions. What did you learn from us or from this group today? Me? Yes. I'm just curious about that. Because you say, even though you didn't plant her, but you know, all those people are here longer than I have been. And uh, she came in, and it seems that you're well knowledge in the subject of narcissism. So how was this experience for you as a facilitator of this group and also a researcher? Uh, Great question. Sorry, little... what was the question? Could somebody write it for me? Thank you. <laughs> Someone type it. That was, shallow, what was my That experience. was a great question. <laughs> Uh, really great question. I was surprised. Uh, I, really? Not my I, didn't, I didn't hear you the question. I really need help. Thank my you. Plant. <laughs> no, Claudia Context. wants to know my <laughs> reaction. What was <laughs> What did I learn? And uh, I sometimes take three days to proce process. So it's a bit early for me to evaluate what I learned. But uh, I was surprised. I did sort of see her escalating some and someone said that, is that Monica? 
but the voice was different. I I knew Monica's voice, so, and it's the style was different. Was my yeah. like feeling of fighting with her? Is that is that being triggered? Like that's the first thing I wanted to do. I want her to like shut up and like I, I just told like, you earlier in the meeting that what they do is they act nice, but then you want to punch them. <laughs> but yeah. you doubt yourself. You override your instincts because they're talking nice or they're seeing, okay. they don't, you can't see it. They're pretending to be nice. They're pretending. They're yeah, they're insincere. Notice, there is no sincere That's why she got sincere. Pissed there off no from this. I was repeating this. I was, and she was taking it personal. I was creeped out the moment she came in the meeting late with a strange picture. And I'm trying to recall the moment that I really wanted to punch her. <laughs> and I think it was when she said something to someone about their accent and she was sweeting up to them. And it was just disgusting and I wanted to punch her. So that was a trigger for me. The second trigger for me that triggered my mutism inside, I could feel it. My brain was just burning up, was the confusing fast talk that was highly emotional, like a turbulent river that I can't swim through. I can't swim through that and therefore so I can't talk. Her pace. Her pacing was really yeah, fast. Yeah, she, she and it wasn't sort of escalated. Even. I was trying to point that out at the end of saying, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. notice how calm I am, but notice how her emotions are out the wazoo. Um, she, she started have a concern, at the point though. of pity. Concern, Claudia. I will talk after Julia. Ju Juliana, I will talk after you. Okay, Juliana, finish. Okay, the moment she went into a turbulent river of emotions was, I pity you. <laughs> and I just, inside my mute, started laughing because she just went off. Yeah, but then she flip-flopped. Mm -hmm. I wanted to punch her way before that. <laughs> it was so aggressive. She wouldn't stop fucking talking. Oh. How do you She's have talking. all these up, Deef, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I just like that you said wazoo. That's my word. <laughs> you know, I think 50 weeks of practice. You handled it well. <laughs> yeah. said and then all of her inappropriate, this is Allie, all of her inappropriate projections. And, and she used the term flying monkeys. Was she talking to one of Adria. us? Adria. She was talking to Adria, which is when I was like, you got to go. <laughs> yeah, because it became like a double entendre. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you saying? You got to go. Saying? And <laughs> Deep called her out though, you know, and I, I really time. appreciate you having that standard of um, ethics in the yeah. meeting. And so you did a great job. Can we get your t shirt? <laughs> yeah, we think forgot we Claudia. No, Claudia let's, Jim, let's, let's, talk. let's James go. Jim has not spoken yet. Okay, go, James. James. Yeah. Wow, thank you. I, I was just going to say when she, when she really lost control there, it was because she didn't have control. It was the very typical narcissist thing that she just didn't have control of the conversation anymore. She did for a little bit, and uh, and that's when she just went crazy. You know? she I was, was also cool poking her. All. And <laughs> everybody also said she a minute, and people gave her a minute, and I was like, no, you're not going to get a minute. Like, everybody was pretty quiet. And so, because I wouldn't shut up is when she got, she started getting pissed. Oh, give her a minute. You like that? Fuck her. Yeah. Claudia. Yeah. You still want to jump in? I'm not new here, <laughs> so I don't know much about narcissism. Uh, I think we are in this group in order to learn. I'm, at least me, I'm in this group to learn more about it. And I just heard about a Monica, and then this person come in, and the what to make us. Who are us? Uh, sometimes, sometimes, yeah, but sometimes if, I mean, what I'm trying to say is perhaps she got triggered as well. And she did. Trigger was, 
what a trigger yeah. is. Trigger connects us to a feeling, would yes. lead us to an emotion, that lead us to a, how would we say, a action that happened to us in our timeline until we become Flash an adult. Back. Yes. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of pain right there. Mm, trauma. Pain. Yes, yes. trauma. And uh, we can say little T, little T, and little T. We don't well, know. She started, she started so talking she about... She did start it, but sometimes I feel like a survivor as well, Holly. I didn't mean to cut you off. Sometimes I feel that I just jump into conclusion before allowing the person to explain themselves. Okay. Well, no. I, I don't. She, I don't know. I, I, I don't like know to that, just that, conversation. I just, I, just, I just like to finish my thoughts. Like right now, I'm just feeling really attacked right now. <laughs> just Go. saying it. So sometimes we are trying to explain, and like I said, that phrase for me was it's gonna be with me. Death. That's I don't know how to pronounce the name. It's gonna yes. be with me the whole week, and I'm gonna replay that. But that's what I went through with my mom. And that's what I went through in my past relationship. I don't know what triggered that person. I don't know if she's going to be okay after this. I don't know if this has been implanted or not implanted. I hope it's not been planted. Because what is the point of triggering all of us? Trigger doesn't bring us anything pleasurable. My brain is going to be overwhelmed. I will have to find a way to suit myself after we turn off this meeting. And it Ooh. seems that we all, we all have been triggered. Do we want to be triggered or we want to recognize our triggers and be able to use a health of coping skills in order to continue our lives? I think one mind. of the coping skills is being able to come down when you're triggered, right? I yes. think it's good yes, to be Yes, but it seems that everyone here have been triggered in a way that we have Everybody. to defend. Yes, and we have All to defend death. Deep. How do you pronounce your name, man? Long Deep. 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 I'd like to hear Holly. Holly, what's your insight, please? Well, I, I, I was just trying to share that she made comment about the way he runs the group. And she said, I've been to groups, blah, 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 and I run a group myself. I run my group the way I see fit. There are lots of narcissist abuse recovery meetings, and they run them the way they see fit. This is Deef's meeting, and the fact that she was challenging and challenging and challenging him, and she did not let up. And I knew Deef could handle it. You know, Deef could handle what she brought. Uh, every other people didn't like the way she, he, she was attacking him. But I knew Deef could handle it. But, uh, you know, people want to get on with the study in the meeting. And Deef has a protocol that he follows. And she was not going along with it. And people were calling her out because she's not going along with the protocol. Definitely agree with you. But his, his being a leader of this group was supposed for him to step up and say, hey, knowing what you guys. No, he's a facilitator. No, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Now it's just playing with words right now. He's a facilitator. What should I have done? No, What's you're a facilitator. Expectation? Let Claudia and Deef have, have it out. Go ahead. What should I have done differently? I'm not saying that we should or should not. But if okay. I am a facilitator in a group, I need to make sure that the, per the people who attend the group, they feel safe. And they can be ex they can, can express themselves and not feel attacked. I don't need to defend my leader. I don't have to defend you. It's not I my job ask, to defend you. I did didn't he, ask yes. people to he defend you. So I? that's why that's the reason. I don't know why I'm defending her, but that's the reason that she said that we all fly monkeys. And I know where no, she's she coming said, from. I was a she said I was No, a she said you guys are flying monkeys. No, she okay. said, you're flying monkey. And the we have time, the recording. She, said, yeah. right. she, told, she was talking about Adria. And the thing is, when we step to save someone, we kind of prevent a harm to come, right, to that person. But if we do that over and over again, when that person is going to learn the skills to save themselves. But I, I wasn't trying to save these. 
I was just trying to shut her up. I don't know what other people were doing. I'm talking for myself. My goal was not to save Deep. Deep is so in his right house. now, I can see Adriana. What you're doing is you're still trying to protect your action, Ooh. which is okay, definitely okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you thought that was appropriate at the moment, mm -hmm. in order okay. to make sure that Deep will continue doing his work. But me, as an outsider, I think that was his job. My job. Some... To. To Man, what? Man, he's just he's just fucking playing with me right now. No, he's not. So I mean, he's just like, he is. He's it's just like up. like your job, my job. I think you should take some responsibility yeah. and accountability. Okay. To make sure that everyone in the group feels safe. Why? You should have muted her. That's the message. Yeah. No, I don't. Think I you. did That's, not I do enough to, to make so, everybody, quiet. all twenty-five people in the room feel safe. That's not, not your job. It's not his job to make us feel safe. I disagree with that. That's not Deef's job. It's not your job to feel safe. It's not even a paid position. Y'all don't no. have to defend Deef. Deef no, no. can defend himself. Let Jeff him is raising. I think that's kind of yeah, I agree. You said so what? So I don't want to hear himself. The point is for us to defend to himself. That's, his because because that's why I asked him what was his reaction when she came in. That's and he answer. said, I do need time to process that in order to give that answer to you. So I'll be back on the next group, on the following group, because I want to hear his, he's going to have like a week, two weeks right. to process it. I just want to hear, because I don't think that I will Are you be saying that you eight. don't feel safe, Claudia? Is that where you're yes. right now? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, so That's, start from oh, there. Holly, let, let's just start finish. I want to hear his perspective Yes, and I, I just want to hear his pers perspective on this because if we are being recorded, there's going to be posted on Facebook, whatever he want to do it. I want to know what is the point of this and what are we are learning throughout the process? Yeah, and, what are his, and what are the information that he is gathering? Because if this is going to cause me more harm than good, then I have to say that's not a group for me. That that's you have to say. This can happen say in any group, though, Claudia. You know. No, 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 no. I say I'm open. Yeah, I'm open. Not. Listen, English is my English is my you second language. Two people. So I, I, I am open. open. Si você quer um I am grupo, open. Vou falar com você. <laughs> no, Adrian. Listen, I am open. But if he's a facilitator of the group, I need to know his opinion about Michelle and how he felt it because we talk about our triggers and I okay. haven't heard him talk I about planted his triggers. I Michelle. I own up. Thank you. I planted Thank her. You. I paid Look, her I know. hundred dollars. Other people, Jeff had questions. Have questions. Jeff. I can say that it'd be bad. I, this I think you're right asking, now. I think you're asking a lot of a facilitator. Oh, facilitate. you guys, you guys, you go. Hey, you guys, Deep I just come, said Jeff go. And then you guys started talking. So can, can someone else Apologies. ask a question? <laughs> With love, seriously. Okay, so uh, Claudia, thank you for joining. You're new here. And it's it's really, we appreciate your perspective, but I just wanted to um, try to give you another angle on things. Um, as somebody who's been coming to this, to this specific group for a long time, uh, Dee feels really strongly that instead of creating safe spaces or doing gray rock or cutting and running from a narcissist, we should try to find a way to engage them. And it's very difficult um, and it's very risky for those who don't really know what they're doing, but that's his angle that he sort of preaches. Um, and I think what he was trying to do today was he was trying to show us how you can safely engage with and perhaps even disengage a narcissist. Make them leave. Can Allison. I also add something? Allison add her hand up. We'll give her because we're we'll give a seven o'clock formal cutoff. Allison. What he said. What he said, but one thing, Claudia. For what it's worth, I don't think you're listening. I don't think you're receptive to feedback. I'm going to call you on it. 
Call me, call me any name you want. I don't care. Um, I mentioned Narcs joined the group. I said that early on. Mm. Um, wow. No, I did early, early on, didn't I, Deep? I know. Yes. Yeah, I you that. did. I, yeah. I, I, I and I was say, fascinated. I want to talk about, just real quick, Claudia, about somebody mentioned about your own um, perceptions. So a couple of weeks ago, Juliana joined. Juliana, can I say this? And I hate her. Please, go ahead. I hated her. It took six hours, Deep will attest to this. And it took six hours, right? Right, Deep? And I realized yep. she's the most authentic person. Authentic person. She presented like a narc. I'm sorry, that's my baggage and my judgment saying that. That's fine. That's and, fine. And she is not. She is not the most authentic person. And I'm I am a I'm a better person and, and I feel for having been wrong about Juliana. Sometimes it takes time, Claudia. Okay, but the narcs that come don't are not receptive. If you spend the time and invest it, people who present like narcs sometimes they're the authentic ones, and and they're worth the time and they learn and and they're receptive. But the narcs don't learn. They shut you down. They leave. Over. Bye. Everyone that comes to the meeting has something to share, and especially when maybe it's their first meeting, depending on where they're at in their journey, they have something that, that they want to share. I'm glad that we're here to, to, to listen to it, right? Because we all can get something. And depending on where they're at, some people want to share more, right? So uh, the difference between many people, including Juliana, including myself, and, and what we just observed was that wasn't share about self. That was share about contradiction. Of, in, of, of entirety. It didn't matter what anybody said, she was contrary. And that's what the difference was, right? Every, like wanting to share your personal story with relation to the content, that's what everybody has done here at, every, at, at different paces. But being contrary over and over again is different. And I think that that's something that maybe not only triggered us all, but also is a good, huge red flag for incoming narc alert monkey whatever you want to call it clown clown alert pickles <laughs> does ali want to go next thank you so much this is only my second meeting and um this is really directed to no one in particular other than to say i think that we each have free will and the ability to exercise self-determination and so far i think you facilitate a fantastic meeting. You do a great job. And I love the opportunities that always arise. You have a very unique approach to facilitating and holding space for <laughs> exactly. And so the thing is, um, it's refreshing. It's not going to fit everyone. However, I felt that I owed it to myself to kind of trust the process. And it was for me to decide, just like for Michelle or anyone else, not everything fits everyone and that's okay. It's not meant to. And to the extent that it fits us and we feel aligned with it and um, you know, it feels comfortable and we feel that we're gaining and growing more than we're not, then I don't know what else should be the expectation. I don't think it's appropriate to project onto you, Deef. Not that I'm defending you. You don't need me to do no, everything him. Yeah. is my fault. No. I am oh, yes, of course it is our master fault. manipulator. Yeah. And, and things so you have the to thing say. is, I think it's important to be mindful to right. hello. I think it's mindful to understand that this is not a paid position. You know, I'm grateful for your gifting us with your time and talents. And there are a lot of resources out here. And I think it's our job to be self-responsible, to really grow ourselves up. And that's not a slam. It's just, I'm speaking to myself. It's my job to grow myself up and to work on myself. And if I feel aligned with group A over group B, then so be it. But it's not my job to hold to task the facilitator of group B and, and give them a whole litany of projects to do when maybe it just may not be the best fit at the time because we're constantly evolving and depending on where we are in our healing and our consciousness we're going to feel aligned with various groups over others but it's not my job to hold facilitators to task to have them to report to me you know what it is I'm projecting onto them that I feel they should be doing that's not that's not my job I, would I like think to add something. 
Alice or Allison had her hand up. Do you want to add on or not, Allison? Oh, and in closing, and this is Allie again, in closing, that can happen to any group. That's part of life. And so I'm actually grateful for the for the teaching opportunity that it presented in a very unique package. So, you know, I'm sitting with myself, allowing myself to dig deeper and to dive a little deeper and inquire and engage in that self-inquiry. What about that um, allowed me to see some areas that perhaps could use a little bit more attention? It's not Deep's job to tell me, you know, write a dissertation on what he gained from it, but maybe in his sharing, allow myself to explore those areas within myself that could use more attention. Okay. Thank you. We're getting close to a time boundary. <laughs> so I extended it to 705. So people who want need to go, feel free. We're just unpacking. Um, uh, Claudia has a hand up. Anybody else who hasn't talked much has a hand I up. Giuliani. I just wanted to mention. James. Wait, anybody else? We got three. <laughs> Any other takers? Okay. Who wants to go first? Claudia, James, or Juliana? I, Can I go first, uh, James? Or oh, Juliana, go, Juliana. Okay. So this Juliana. is my third week here. And I wanted to express the reason why I'm coming. The first week I came into the group was because Deep presented to the world a, a visual way for me to navigate my emotions. I had discovered there was a lot of anger inside of me. I have a disability to understand cognitively my emotions. Um, so I wanted to find out the source of that anger because I've been not antisocial, but I have been insulated for the last two years. I've not met with anyone or interacted with anyone for two years. And I need to get back into society, but um, I'm triggered a lot and I need to identify when I'm being triggered because I can't identify my emotions. So I don't know when I'm being triggered. I just get the feeling that there's something wrong. And the other problem that comes with the triggers is that my mute, I go mute. And it's like, I need to practice this in real life and get triggered, literally get triggered and fight through it and cognitively rewire myself to be able to identify and work through it and keep my voice because I'm tired of being a mute. And that's why I keep coming. I, I got an experience today where I felt the trigger. I felt it come from this Michelle. And I connected with that feeling. And I, and I couldn't talk. And I knew that feeling inside me was, I'm a mute right now. I can't speak. But if I can connect with that, then I can find a way of talking and being annoying to the narcissist and making them go away. Okay. Thank you. Claudia James, who wants to go? You two choose. Okay, I'll jump in. Um, you know, uh, this is my second time here also. And, um, and Deep, I think you're great. Um, Jeff had mentioned that you're a that you're a proponent to confront a narcissist, which um, I was thinking when this woman was speaking that it was just a perfect example of, of why you want to um, disconnect from narcissists and have uh, no no confrontation with them at all. And um, I thought it was. They were leaving when she left the, left the group because it, um, it just goes nowhere when you're in a confrontation with um, a narcissist. So, but I appreciate that when you're in, in a relationship and you stuck having to communicate, it's just a difficult thing. But I thought she was a really good example of where it just is um, exhausting. And, uh, um, 
definitely was taking me back a little bit to how exhausting it can really be um, how to communicate with somebody. Um, so, in fact, I, I'll, and briefly, I'll just say that with some of this other stuff we were talking about, you know, one of the advantages of having living communication going on with a narcissist is that they still trigger you in the living communication, but then, and you really want to respond back right away sometimes. But when it's lit in, you can sometimes realize how you're being drawn into it and, um, and then just stop and not, not get drawn in. So um, anyway, people are great. And uh, so um, find uh, thank you. very helpful. This, this woman, I thought, just kind of was an example of where things were kind of leading anyway. So it was perfect. That's it. Claudia. Okay. Me, I think this is like a, a version, immersion, you know, therapy. Like if you're afraid of heights, it's just throw you right there and they have to deal with whatever is coming. So that's what I felt about this group of us today, because uh, I guess if I can, I will be, I'll be back, but I have to realize that's not a safe place. It's just like anybody can show up, they can tell you anything that you want to want to say, and we're gonna be triggered again. And I just wonder where the healing is coming. If you keep it keeping trigger and triggering and trigger again, so yes. in your brain is always in a hyper-vigilance mode. So when you're able to decrease your nervous system and be able to go through healing, because I don't want to defend myself uh, against another narcissist. I don't want to have that experience again. I created an aversion to that. So if I create, if I create an aversion to that, I recognize the red flags. I think that's the point, right? Becoming here to recognize red flags recognize the trigger, recognize the, the inner child wounds that we have to work on it, and start promoting healing. I don't think that it was really healing, except that phrase that I'm going to talk with my therapist about it. I loved it. That was like, because how many times I tried to prove myself that I was trying to be honest, except that. I'm not saying that this was not a great group. What I'm trying to say is, where is the healing on this? Because I'm really worked up right now. My nervous system is really, really high right now. Can because I offer we have to fight it. Yes, definitely. Okay. So um, I bet maybe a year ago, if that would have happened, I would have felt the same. And I'm, I maybe even would have fought with her directly. I'm like, who do you think you are, right? But instead, tonight, um from my perspective right looking back on it and even in the moment all i wanted was for the content to be able to be shared because i was like we were all gaining something from it and i i also wanted my people to not be offended further and so I, instead of being like you're rude you're a piece of what like i would I, I wanted to be like you're a, like what's wrong with you, like dig into her. But instead, I, I just was like, mute your microphone, blah, blah, blah. And then when she got really bad, I just said, can you please leave? Like now I think it's time for you to go. I think that in the case of narcissism and pre presentation of them in the world, for me, that is a, that's way different than I would have handled it. For me, I feel like it, it taught me that I'm not gonna take that shit anymore. I'm just not. Like if, if you don't show up with a responsible attitude and act like an adult, and you act like a fucking narc. Brenda, gonna, you know what I mean? So it's going it, to, my point is. Brenda, after, I, think that, I think that's fantastic what you said, but uh, you'll, I am. But you'll get there. Yeah, but why should we stay? I think in my mind, we should all have second. left. Add on. No, why should we leave? This is our group, right? No one go should be and watch, her. Go back and watch Deep's videos. Go on Visceral Gravitas yeah. and watch his video. I'm not targeting up. him. I'm not targeting him. I'm not targeting him. 
We're trying to. You asked why do you want to be in this group? I'm telling you, there's deepest to... stuff to teach us. If you go back Finish and watch his videos, you'll learn. Feedback, Claudia. I'm not targeting him. I'm just. Let's I'm not targeting him. Let's give a final closing chance for Iman if you want to jump in. Or we'll stop sure. the formal <clears throat> session. Iman, go. So, um, a few things. Um, part, part of it, uh, talking about safe space, um, this person who was in this room was not <clears throat> our parents or girlfriend or wife or husband or spouse or whatever. She, she was here and she went away. There's, there's, there was no danger. Um, but it did <clears throat> provide opportunity for us. I mean, I was on mute and just listening to this and you can just kind of see how this back and forth was happening and the tactics they're using and observe it. Yeah, it's triggering, but it's the opportunity to get triggered in a safe space and realize why you're getting triggered, trying to think through that and also see the dynamic of what, what how these conversations happen. Because when you're in that relationship yourself and experiencing it, you get emotional because it's directed right at you and you can't necessarily see it. Um, <clears throat> as well as if it's some stranger. Now, I, I understand that it was triggering just watching um, and experiencing this. You wanna jump in and save Deef or protect someone else or say what you want to think, but um, you don't necessarily have to. You could just sit back and observe. So what's yeah. the name of the movie Clock Orange? Like, you guys know what I'm talking about? I feel that I'm in that movie right now, so I'll Clock be back. Orange. This kind of hardcore stuff. I'll be back. Clock, I'll be Clock, back. I'm not saying Clock, I'm not going to be back. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's funny. How did, what, 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 that's what, the what, way that's where i feel that i am right now i'm just not what, did, milk. what did michelle trigger everybody with yes jeff basically it was like whoa what's happening you have to I watch the it. recording okay i will watch that's that's fascinating all right ali yeah and ali thank you so much deep you know as i was also reflecting and i was on mute for the entire time she was speaking it reminded me of being in a living real time laboratory where we're able to engage in the trigger. We had a subject unintentional. I truly believe she was not a plant. However, um, we're able to engage in this beautiful, very rich textural situational autopsy and really dissect the elements. And to me, that's where the growth is. I'm not interested in showing up to a group just to be safe. And please understand, I'm not projecting one to anyone and certainly not you, um, Claudia. I'm saying for myself, my observations, many of us have been to many groups over the years and have tried on many therapies. And I'm new to this whole world of NPD um, or narcissistic, excuse me, narcissistic abuse recovery work. I'm new to this group. I'm new to this world. And what I am fully intending is to live the best life of my choosing. I'm not able to do that, staying contracted in a bubble and away from triggering events. I choose to learn the skills to be masterful so that I can navigate the waters. It's almost like I don't ever want to learn to swim. So please don't ever put me in a situation where I run the risk of capsizing in a boat or falling in. And I love the water. I want to swim. I want to be able to be one with nature and not stay sheltered and safe and small. And that's all I want to say. I think this was a beautiful opportunity to learn in a very um, unconventional way, but in a real life, real time, in our face way, triggers and all, dissecting it in a group with beautiful support, people chiming in and seeing that I survived and I came through with uh, insights and more skills than I had coming in. Maybe and now we time. can all join her group and, and <laughs> mess up her group. <laughs> okay. Formal recording over.